V6s are some of the best sounding cars in the world, particularly for the money. Today we're going to look at 10 in particular that depreciated a bunch since they were released and now all cost less than £15,000. This was a request from one of you guys, by the way, so in the comments down below, let me know your request for the next videos. Do hit the like button as well, subscribe as well if you're new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> It was a sad day when the Mondeo left markets here in Europe and over in the US as well, as they had a long history of offering affordable daily driver saloons, as well as fast forward equivalents. In this video, we're focusing on the second generation Ford Mondeo ST220, the successor to the only car that the three old school Top Gear boys all agree on as being a great car. It comes with a 2.5 litre V6 engine, which makes 222 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 7.4 seconds, not bad considering it's the oldest car on the list. It also came as an state and the main formula isn't too different to a modern day ST, just that it came before ST was a formalised badge for fast forwards. They'll run you around £1,700 at the bottom end, making it the cheapest car on the list and you'll only need to spend around 10 k to get into a stunning example. Rust around the doors is known on these and servicing needs to be top notch to keep these running well with oil changes being a regular requirement and brake calipers are known to seize. Fair warning, this video has two Alfa Romeos, there had to be because the Alfa Busa V6 is an absolute work of art and if any brand is known for making lovely looking great sounding V6s it's Alfa Romeo. We're starting with the Brera which is a magnificent hatchback come Grand Tourer designed by the exceptionally talented Giorgetto Giugiaro and is highly underrated in my opinion. It's never been known to be a fast car despite that 3.2 litre V6 engine which makes 256 brake horsepower as it will only do not to 60 in 6.8 seconds but then it is more of a cruiser than it is a hot hatch. Pro drive came in to make the otherwise quite undynamic Brera into something way more agile with a bit more motorsports passion behind it and just 500 S models were made making it a pretty rare car. £10,500 to get you into one of these and 15k is enough for a 2008 model with 60k on it. There are some known build quality issues on the interiors of these, some known issues as well with the gearboxes and stretch timing chains are the most catastrophic problem. Today we know and love the Golf R, it's a staple in the hot hatch world and the step up from the historic GTI in terms of performance performance and also price of course. But the predecessor to the Golf R is this, the second generation Golf R32 which set up much of the R's formula. Even more interesting, it's the only car on this list that doesn't have a typical V6 engine block but a VR6 instead, which simply puts is effectively a clever way of fitting more cylinders into a narrower space. So as I said, it's got a 3.2 litre VR6 engine which produces 246 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 6.3 seconds, surprisingly slow when you compare it to current R's but for the the time pretty good amongst other hot hatches and it's still a lovely offering which I think will be a classic in future just like the previous generation. 4k will get you into one of these and for £15,000 you get a 2009 model with 50k on it. Make sure DSG oil changes have been done on time and the manuals aren't clear of transmission related issues either though engines are generally pretty solid. On to the second Alfa Romeo on this list now and probably my favourite of the two the 147 GTA which compared to the Brera is more of a hot hatch and less of a Grand Tourer but still has an incredibly accomplished designer, Walter De Silva, known for beautiful designs like the first gen Audi R8. As a hot hatch, it competed with the R32 we just mentioned and of course was faster, hence it's higher up on this list. That's thanks to its 3.2 litre V6 engine which makes 246 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 6.1 seconds, not bad at all for another older car. It was also known to be a bit unwieldy on release, mostly because of that big engine up front in a front wheel drive car, so make sure you get one with the Q2 diff which drastically supports hand. Handling. These run around 10k at the bottom end while 15k gets you a 2003 model with 90k on the clock. Timing belts need to be replaced more often than the schedules originally suggested and there are known electrical issues, it's a classic alpha so treat it as such. Next up we have one of my favourite cars to include in videos, the Lexus GS450H from the 4th generation GS which is a bit of a jack of all trades as a luxury executive car, a hybrid, a fast car and of course a V6 which also comes from a great lineage of underrated previous GSs. It's the only hybrid on this list in fact with its 3.5 litre V6 engine mated to an electric motor which puts out a combined 341 brake horsepower taking it to 60 in 5.7 seconds, actually pretty decent for a car in its class and the most powerful car on this list. It's not a huge revolution over the previous generation, it simply modernises and tightens the same nice Lexus formula, it's simple but offers great luxury for the money. You can actually get these starting at 10k with the full 15 getting you into a 2012 model with 70k on the clock. These are of 
of course known to be very reliable given the Toyota engine block, but batteries for the electric motor can perish over time and cost quite a bit to replace. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. And let me know in the comments down below, who makes the best V6 engines? I would argue it's pretty Alfa Romeo, but you can let me know differently in the comments down below. On to the top five now, and in fifth we have the Vauxhall Insignia VXR, which is a crazy cool hot saloon and estate, and is incredibly well equipped. Genuinely, this V6 properly flies under the radar. These come with a 2.8 litre turbocharged V6 engine, which makes 320 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 5.6 seconds, which is plenty of performance for a daily driver family car. That performance is helped by the fact that it's all-wheel drive to really put all that power down to the roads with a Haldex active system. Outside of that, the formula is pretty similar to the better-known Astra VXR, the more aggressive body kit and interior, the nice larger alloys, and the rest. I'd personally aim for one that's post-2013, because that's when it got a facelift. They'll run you around £7,000 the bottom end, and 15k will get you into a 2012 model with 50k on the clock. Timing chain issues are known on pre-2011 cars, and automatic gearboxes have been known to whine. Faulty fuel filters are also known, but generally, the engine block is supposed to be pretty good on reliability. Next up, we have the Saab 9.3 Turbo X, a special edition of the 9.3, which is built to celebrate 30 years of Saab turbochargers, and it literally only comes in one basic spec, black with grey trim, as well as the larger brakes, stiffer suspension, and the faux carbon fibre around the interior. It is, of course, a turbocharged V6, a 2.8 litre one to be exact, which puts out 276 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5.4 seconds, helped by the fact that it's all-wheel drive. Saab celebrated turbos because they're known for some insane turbo cars of the past, and the Turbo X even came with some nods to classic Saabs like the 900 with the turbo boost gauge. These are very hard to find, but the cheapest I found was listed for 5k, while 15k gets you a 2009 model with 40k on it. The coolant reservoirs are known to be quite prone to leaking, and it's quite heavy too, which is a knock-on impact for some of the consumables. Make sure you keep up service schedules on the gearbox too, as it has to deal with a fair bit of torque. We've just had quite a few V6s augmented with boosting of some description, so let's go back to another naturally aspirated example with the Nissan 370Z, the successor to the 350Z, as well as a genuinely historic lineage of Nissan and Datsun Z cars that have captured the hearts and imaginations of multiple generations of car owners. The 370Z modernized, uprated, and enhanced the 350Z offering as though the two cars look slightly similar, almost every single part was engineered entirely for the 370Z as opposed to shared with the 350Z. It's also Nissan's last naturally aspirated high-performance, high-revving V6 car with a manual gearbox, which is a purist dream. That engine is a 3.7-litre V6, which makes 326 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5.1 seconds, though this car's capability goes above and beyond going fast in a straight line. They'll cost you around £8,000 the bottom end for a convertible example, which is generally less sought after, while £15,000 gets you a 2012 coupe with 65k on it. Clutch, master, and slave cylinders are known to wear quickly, oil consumption can be quite high, and the stock exhausts have been known to fail. Taking second on the list is the first of two supercharged cars on this list, the Audi S4, which is a slight step down from the RS4, but remains a performance car which is effectively for people who aren't rich or committed enough to get the RS6, and consider the A4 to be a bit boring. I'm talking about the 4th gen B8 S4, which was the one that fully split the S4 Cabriolet out onto the S5 badge instead, so it only came as the saloon and estate, but as I like estates, we'll focus on that. Either way, they come with a 3 litre supercharged V6 engine, which puts out 328 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.9 seconds, and if you watch the channel, you know I love the sound of a supercharger, which only adds to the symphony of a V6. They're listed anywhere from around 6k, with £15,000 getting you a 2014 facelifted model with 100k on it. Water pumps and thermostats were known to be problematic on these, but many will have been sorted in recalls. The PCV valve has also seen some issues, and mechatronic units were wrought with issues as well. The second of our two supercharged cars, and most importantly the top car on this video thanks to its pace and power, is the Jaguar XES, which sits in the compact executive class, and takes on cars like the BMW 335i and of course the S4 we just spoke about. It's also the basis for the stunning Project 8, though these two cars couldn't really be further apart in terms of their offerings. The Project 8 is an exotic beast track car that takes on Porsche GT products, and the XE is effectively a daily executive car. Like the S4, these come with a 3 to supercharged V6 engine, which makes 335 brake horsepower, taking them to 60 in 4.9 seconds. It was designed by another accomplished designer, Ian Callum, and was the successor to the X-Type, but in my opinion, in it way surpasses that car as a fast executive saloon. This is the most expensive car on the list though, starting at around £12,500, while £15,000 will get you 
into a 2016 model with 70k on it. The main issues to note are water pump problems, coolant leaks, and a whining noise from the automatic gearbox, according to owners. And so there you have it, a bunch of nice V6 cars that all cost less than £15,000. And since we spoke about two Alfa Romeos in this video, you should check out this video here where I drive a very, very nice Alfa Romeo. <clears throat> Subscribe below if you're new down here. Mass thanks to the page for their support, and to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one.